Oh, hello! Good evening, welcome to another episode of my Monday Night Live podcast every Monday night at 9pm French time. Today, it's uh, April 1st. Uh, happy April Fool's Day. Oh, you know what? I've decided that I'm quitting my comedy career. I'm never going to do do a joke again. Ha <laughs> ha, April Fool's. Wah wah. Oh, God. We'll talk about French April Fool's. Uh, in a second, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get started tonight, a uh, couple of uh, fun things uh, to announce. A uh, couple of fun things to announce. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm back on stage doing English only comedy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've had the privilege of opening since we last spoke to each other uh, for a couple of uh, comedians based in New York. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Asmus was one of them. I did 15 minutes opening for him, and another guy, Brazilian guy, based in New York called. Uh, Rafi Bastos and uh, the shows went really well. I'm excited to be back on stage doing stuff uh, in English only, none of the bilingual stuff. And uh, if you want to come and see a show, you can come to Paul Taylor and Friends, which is my show that I'm using basically uh, to uh, help write new stuff for me. And then you get to discover a bunch of English speaking comedians that are hilarious. We just did a show last week on Wednesday. The next one is on the 28th of April. Uh, so uh, come and see the show, the tickets, uh, you can find the tickets on my website, it's uh, paultaylorcomedy.com slash tickets. Um, and what's great about it all is that I'm building uh, up a show in English only, that, uh, the idea is that I will tour that around English speaking countries for the next year uh, or so, and uh, who knows, maybe France as well. So there we go, that is the update uh, in terms of me doing stand up, cheers everyone, I'm drinking a non-alcoholic. 1664 says 64. I was uh, going to uh, try, well, I tried to save a non alcoholic Guinness that the wonderful uh, Linda Wonder Woman, who's in uh, the uh, live right now. Hello, hello. Je rate trois, quatre live. Je reconnais pas même les noms de. Right. So, uh, uh, Linda Wonder Woman, who's been absent apparently for the last three or four lives, she bought me a non alcoholic Guinness all the way back in Dublin. When I did my show in Dublin, uh, she came to Dublin on purpose to see the show. She gave me a non-alcoholic Guinness there. The problem was, because we were only travelling with carry-on luggage uh, on EasyJet. Uh, was it EasyJet or Ryanair? I think it was EasyJet. We weren't allowed to bring the beer. So she took it back in her luggage. And then she saw me at Paul Taylor and Friends last week and gave me... A, I was... I couldn't wait to drink it, Linda. I'm sorry. I was going to drink it on the live. I already drank it. Sorry, but cheers. Thank you for buying me non-alcoholic beer. Linda Wonder Woman! Um, so, uh, me I was going to say Merry Christmas there. <laughs> I've gone fucking mental already. Uh, Happy Easter to those of you who celebrate it. Uh, I mean, we don't really celebrate it, right? Uh, we're not religious, but we do do the Easter egg hunt. Um, and we had uh, uh, some friends over uh, to the house for Easter yesterday. And I organized an Easter egg hunt where I went out at night time the night before because my daughter is still about the Easter bunny that comes and puts eggs, hides the eggs somewhere. It used to be in an apartment, so we, we used to just hide the eggs in the apartment. When she went for a little snooze in the afternoon, we were like, the Easter bunny's coming during your siesta, during your snooze, during your nap. Uh, and then when you wake up, you can find the eggs. Problem number one, she doesn't uh, have a nap anymore. Problem number two, we don't live in an apartment anymore. Problem number three, we had a bunch of friends over with their kids. And so I had to go out the night before and hide all of the um, eggs in the garden. Uh, and we had like these plastic eggs that, where you can hide a bunch of other uh, chocolate eggs inside them. So it's a plastic egg inside of which is like three or four other eggs. Um, turned out that the... Uh, the, the, the eggs, all of them, had slugs in them. Les limaces. Because our garden is infested with slugs. So, <laughs> I sent out the rules to the kids before that. I'm like, kids, we find the eggs. Problem number one, we have lots of stray cats that come in the garden. So, there's probably cat shit. So, watch out for the cat shit. Number two, there are stinging nettles in our garden. In our garden. So, make sure you don't put your fingers in the sting nettles. Because they will sting you. Number three, which we found out, was the slugs. It felt like it was some sort of 
I'm a celebrity get me out of here challenge. I'm a celebrity's kid get me out of here challenge with the slugs, the stinging nettles and <laughs> the cat shit. Anyway, got me thinking about French Easter. What's the situation with French Easter? Because somebody told me it's not a bunny in France. It's a fucking bell that comes around and drops the eggs. I mean, to be fair, a, a, a bunny dropping eggs uh, and hiding eggs is weird. Why do bunnies have eggs? Why is it not a chicken? Uh, but I feel like French Easter's a little bit different and I have no idea. I was, I was too busy chatting with the English speakers and we didn't even get onto it. What is the situation <laughs> with um, the French Easter? I don't understand. Red Becky says Easter Bunny is American. It's English as well, I think. I mean, I grew up, I think, with an Easter Bunny. I don't know. It's like Santa Claus. At what point do you stop? Because, I mean, a kid doesn't have to be too intelligent to be like, uh, I'm not sure that eggs come out of a bunny. So how does that happen? Uh, <laughs> and Austin says, this all sounds like good training for small kids to learn risk management in a healthy way. <laughs> Charlie Sandman brings up a good point. Chocolate eggs look like a bunny poop. Okay, that kind of works. So the bunny's just done a bunch of shit in the garden with the cat. Now you have to determine which one is chocolate, <laughs> which one is actual poo. <laughs> um, Domicienne Gégou, 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 Gégou. Um, bells and hens too. Okay, so you've got hens. That works. That's fine. Uh, Bells though. Okay, Misha Luna says it's the bells coming from Rhone and flying in the sky dropping the eggs. <laughs> ah! I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? Uh... <clears throat> Rabbits lay eggs. Of course they do. Chocolate ones at Easter. They don't lay eggs. Fucking rabbits don't lay eggs. Hopefully you're being ironic there. Maybe, do they lay eggs? Why well, they fucking don't. <laughs> They have babies like we have babies. They give birth to a baby rabbit. I've never seen it. I'm just presuming like other mammals, they don't have eggs. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys have got bells. Yeah, it's Roma's bells. Okay, so the bells drop the eggs. That's good. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Much like the rabbit. I mean, the rabbit could have picked up the eggs from the hens. Stolen. Maybe they're thief. Maybe they're thieves. They're thief? I can't speak. Maybe there are thief. <laughs> Um, so the, the hens, the, 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 they've stolen, the rabbits have stolen the eggs from the hens and they disperse them in different people's gardens and apartments. Um, apart from the slugs and the stinging nettles and the cat poo, uh, it was a very successful uh, egg hunt. I still think I didn't count the eggs as I put them out, to be honest. So I don't know if there's still some eggs in the garden that we might find in a year's time uh, when I eventually decide to do the gardening, which I was going to do before we invited everyone, but I fucked my back up again. Uh, I've done all the muscles in my back because I bent over to take a photo. Uh, I got some uh, marathon training gear from uh, a company called Circle Sportswear, who are like an eco-friendly French made in France or made in Europe. It's, it's a cool brand that were like, hey, can we give you some free stuff for your marathon training? I'm like, oh, I'm an influencer. Let's fucking go. Um, and so they sent me a bunch of stuff and I tried to take a photo of it on my floor and it wasn't quite aligned. So I bent over and <laughs> ah! So uh, Friday I had to cancel a couple of shows. I couldn't move on Friday. I went to the physiotherapist today and uh, they were fucking useless. It was just basically <laughs> It was like a mixed. Why am I even talking about this? Why did I get on to oh because I was gonna mow the lawn and do some stuff in the garden anyway um, oh, right. Uh, Misha Luna, doesn't the Easter Bunny carry a basket with the eggs in it? It must mean he stole it from a chocolate hen. You're all celebrating a thief hiding his loot. <laughs> that is exactly it. All the way from Spain, Felices Pascuas. No, that's probably Portuguese, isn't it? Felices, because in Spanish it's Feliz Pascua. I don't know. Speaking of Portugal, uh, I won't be around next Monday night. Monday night live next Monday isn't happening because I will be in Portugal visiting Papa, um, who lives there. Uh, so we're going to go visit uh, uh, my dad in Portugal. Tudo bem, tudo bem. Uh, so I won't be here next Monday. Just, just a bit, of, just a bit of a pre, pre warning, pre warning. Um, 
The rabbit is drop shipping eggs because it's scared of the fox. I love these theories. <laughs> uh, Linda says no chocolate at home, but the gingerbread is in the oven. Are you talking about me? Way Gingerbread! I still do have a bunch of your Aero chocolates, by the way. Linda, was this you as well? I feel like you, when I went to Dublin, was it in Dublin? It might not have been in Dublin. I feel like I got a lot of presents, including the thing that's on the wall behind me, my little green thing that says, Feck off, you feckin' gobshite. I feel like the arrows came from a different period, but I've got, like, still about six packets of arrows behind me over here, uh, and I'm working my way through them slowly. Peppermint arrows for the win! I love it. Um, so, um... Ba -da -ba -ba -da 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 -da. Uh, <laughs> Sabs F, oh my god, are you going back to Faro, lol. No, we don't. My dad lives uh, not far from uh, Porto, so we're not going back. I don't think I will ever visit Faro ever again. I might go for personal reasons, but never for a show. Or maybe it will, for those of you who don't know, uh, who haven't followed the live or know, if this is your first time, hi. Uh, one of my worst shows that I ever had was in Faro, Portugal last year, uh, fucking October. And it broke, it's where I kind of broke my one year of sobriety by getting shit-faced because it was such a bad show. So uh, it was it was the beginning of the end of my sobriety. It was in October last year and it's kind of crept up in the last couple of months, basically because I don't talk about it anymore on stage. Do you know what I mean? Um, Kristen Kim talking about French Easter. I heard Weekend Pascal on France A4. I remember when you first talked about it. Yeah, when you're out and about, uh, like just before the weekend of Easter uh, in France, that's the other thing that I don't understand. Why does Easter fall? Why is, why is Christ's resurrection on a different weekend, depending on the moon and the sun and shit, when he's supposedly born on the same day every year? We celebrate his birth every year on the same day, even though that's not when... It was when it happened, uh, but the death is like uh, it's sometime in March, sometime in April. Uh, it's to do with the 40 days of something after the 12. I know nothing. It just annoys me that it's on a different day. But anyway, on the weekend before, if you're walking around like a shop and buying some stuff in France, the 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 shop tenders will always say "Bon weekend, Pascal," as in like "Happy Easter weekend." And it took me a while to figure out uh, that that's what that meant because in French it's Pâques. And Pascal is someone's name. So I didn't understand why people were saying, have a great weekend, Pascal. Uh, and I was like, who the fuck is Pascal? I don't understand who this is. And then it took me a while to figure out that in French, you know, the accent circonflexe, the, the hat on uh, any of the vowels means that it used to be an S, like hostel, hotel, hospital, uh, hôpital, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, so, uh, Pascal is, means Pac, Pac is because it was Pasqua, Pasqua, it means East, I, I don't know what it means in Latin, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I hope you had a good weekend, Pascal. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, ta -da -ta -ta -wa -ta -da -ta -ta. Is he talking about Paul Taylor Sr.? Yes, he is. I am talking about Paul Taylor Sr. Steve Taylor, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> what fucking do you know what I mean? Fucking me. Um, so anyway, uh, that was uh, that was Easter, uh, and uh, also hold on. Um, uh, 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 oh, there's uh, before we move on. Hold on before we move on from Easter, because we've got there's two themes of today. It's Easter and April Fool's Day. Uh, it's because be Easter's based on a pagan holiday. Okay, still don't understand why it means it's a different day every year. Do you know what I mean? Which also leads to the fact that the bank holidays in May are different, like Ascension, the Ascension, and the, uh, what's the other thing that happens? Uh, Pentecost, Pentecost. Uh, they're all different days as well every year. Weirdly, it's, they're the only, it's like, it's one of the, I, it's, eh, I don't understand. Uh, anyway, what was I going to say? Uh, mm, 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 mm. Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, I've, I've lost it. I've lost it. I need some beer. Uh, 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 oh yeah, April Fools! April Fools' Day, uh, which in France is called le Poisson d'Avril. That is what's happening. Why French people is it called Poisson d'Avril? The fish of April, the fish of April. April Fools' Day. They're like, oh, here's a fucking prank. Hey, fish of April. <laughs> April's fish. I need to know this. I need to know why it is a fish. We've got 
We've got different things going on all in one weekend. We've got a bunny that steals eggs from a chocolate hen, uh, or a bell that's flying from Rome. And then we've got a fish that shows up. I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, what's the situation with fish? Pokraj Roy uh, says, uh, laugh my Paul would have a field day learning Muslim and Hindu holidays based on the lunar calendar. Well, Ramadan, Eid Mubarak, um, is uh, happening right now. Uh, I was listening to, uh, I was overhearing a conversation at my physiotherapist today, a new one. Uh, they were all Muslim, talking about how difficult it was to have Ramadan during Easter, because all they wanted to do was eat all of the fucking chocolate. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, so, yeah, mate. Uh, oh, Ollie P, today's my daughter's birthday. I remember phoning people to give them the good news and then telling them, telling me to fuck off, thinking I was joking when she was born. Ha! <laughs> I, oh, oh, I've just thought about something. Anyway, not related. Uh, the fish is also linked with the Christians. Okay, here we go. April Fools, is it? Oh, is April Fools religious as well? Anne Austin, isn't it that there used to be a tradition of sticking a picture of a fish on someone's back in France? Okay, maybe. Now it's a sign they use in Egypt. The fish is a symbol of Christ. Now, why we use it for April Fools? No idea. Is fish a symbol of Christ? Because he turned water into fish? What did he do? He fed bread. What was it? Why is it a... <laughs> I, I, I don't remember uh, from back in the day. Uh, 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 oh. April's day is only before 12 noon in England. Thank you, Red Becky. Yes, this is a, another interesting point because my mate uh, uh, and manager, Adam, sent me a text message at 12.36 being like, uh, I've decided to move back to Scotland permanently. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thanks for everything. Um, and uh, I laughed because I was kind of expecting that anyway. Uh <laughs> Because he's just come back from Scotland. Why did I laugh? There was something, oh, because there was another private joke, whatever. And then he, he sent a picture of a fish. And I'm like, oh, it's April Fool's, the fish. Yeah, okay. Uh, fish is a symbol of fertility. I mean, what is fish not a symbol of? If we're going by this way, surely. Okay. Anne Austin, Sabs, has confirmed uh, that yes, on April 1st, you'd stick a paper fish on people's back. Okay, is that the only reason why it's April Fool's? It's a fish. Is that the, is that the best prank you can come up with, France, is sticking a fish on someone's back. Come on! Um, when I taught French, I used to put a paper fish on my students' back. There you go! You must have seen little fish stickers on the back of certain cars. I think it was popular from the 1970s onwards. Ah, no, I've not. Why is it a fish, though? Why didn't they... St I mean, if you're at school, why would you not, like, stick a, a, a paper penis on someone's back? That's funnier. Because dick is always funnier. Do you know what I mean? Or something rude, like somebody sticking their middle finger up. Like, what, what, what why is it a fish? Red Becky says we don't do fish. I know, we, there's nothing to do with fish. What we do in England is we take um, cling film or whatever, papier alimentaire. What's it called? In, in, in What's cling film, the non-branded version? Uh, cling film, see-through transparent film that you use to cover food. You do that on the toilet and then... As your wife or husband or child goes to the toilet, the piss goes everywhere. Hilarious! <laughs> but then you have to clean it up. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Jesus was a fish. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, cellophane, cellophane. Saran wrap. I think that's a brand, isn't it? Uh, saran wrap. Saran wrap, so American. Hey, can I get some saran wrap, please, and the aluminum foil? Uh, still don't know why it's fish. Somebody look it up, and we need to find out now. Uh, somebody look it up. Why is it a fish? Um, and while somebody looks it up, tell me your favorite pranks. What pranks have you played on April's Fool's Day? Uh, or the, the fish of April? Uh, what are some of the best pranks? I've talked about the toilet one. I've never done the toilet one. I've just seen... Other people do it. What's a prank that I've done um, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's worked? Probably not even on April Fool's Day. I mean, I've done the prank before online being like, oh, I'm quitting comedy forever. <laughs> April Fool's. 
I just feel it's it, it's just been done. Um, oh, has anyone seen jokes on media? On so social media does a great job. Like companies do great jobs. Uh, the people that manage social media content for companies uh, do great jobs. On on on. I have not. I've not opened social media today, um, so I don't know any of what's going on. But let's hear some of them. I'd love to. What are some of the pranks that have been played online? Um, Jesus was a fish, so that's why he walked on water. I got it. <laughs> oh, Raquel Regal, there's no reason for the fish. Okay, well, there we go. Uh, Bizarium, his prank, that's a pretty good prank, said to his son that we're going to eat uh, spinach at lunchtime. Just spinach, Bizarium. Is that it? Just spinach on its own. Oh, fuck. Why didn't I think of something, a prank? To oh, we missed a trick. That I'll tell you what, I'll tell you why. I forgot that it was April Fool's Day until manager Adam sent me a text saying he's quitting. Uh, also, because the brunch yesterday, the Easter, turned into quite the alcohol fest. Uh, and uh, my wife and I were completely hung over this morning, which is why I'm drinking non-alcoholic beer today. Um, so we were just, we were too tired, but we should have played a prank on our daughter. Ah, oh. oh, that would have been good. That would have been good. Uh, what else? Irene Francfort put the teacher's desk on chalks. Hmm. As in, what do you mean chalks? Like the white chalk bit. So you'd put the desk on the chalk so that it would like move. I guess that's what you're saying. It's a pretty good prank. Um, oh, I tell you what I did for my dad once, but I don't know if this was April Fools or not. Maybe my mum got involved. I mean, me and my mum did it, but I don't know if it was for April Fools or it was just like a Tuesday morning prank. What we did was... Because um, I guess my dad at some point, I was like seven, living in France at the time. And uh, so I don't remember what the occasion was. I guess my dad loved eggs. He loved to eat like hard boiled eggs for breakfast. Who's got the fucking time to do that? My mum, uh, to make it. So the prank was that uh, we, uh, I mean, it was very simple. We just cut the egg like you would normally cut it, um, took all the egg out then turned it upside down in the in the egg holder so you couldn't see. And then when he went with the knife to cut uh, the top of the egg, um, he then beat us both to... <laughs> no, he just went... I, I don't even remember his reaction. I think it was funny. He must have been like, ha ha, good one. Because I'm sure he picked it up and realised it wasn't the right weight. But, you know, when you've got a kid, you you make believe. You, you pretend that it was a good prank. I think that's the prank. Um, Miss Fopa... Uh, barbarian prank. My dad always woke up with water on our feet. That's the Polish tradition. What do you mean? <laughs> what? He would wake you up by throwing water on your feet. I mean, that's a pretty good prank. But then, who's then got to change the bed? Ah! Oh. <laughs> Red Becky. I made my husband a cup of tea with Marmite and milk once. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Oh, that is horrific! Oh my god! Did you get it on film? I hope you got it on film. Oh, that is amazing. Marmite is disgusting. It is... It, I don't understand why it exists. Who likes it? I mean... oh. So drinking that... So you made a cup of tea. Did you mix the Marmite in there? Or was it just hot water with Marmite and milk? Oh, <laughs> Marmite and milk! Oh! I love it. That's a great one. Um, Skittles deodorant. I need more information, Charlie Sandman. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Oh, as in Skittles decided they were going to make a deodorant that, like, when you put it under your arm, it's all multicolored. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, oh, Brum Plum. All the way from fucking Birmingham. The Greek letters for ichtus meaning fish, pronounced ICT, ICTUS, became an acronym, I, Jesus, X, Christ, O, God's, Y, Son, E, Saviour. E, ah, oh, okay. Ah, so it's the Greeks, the fucking Greeks. Um, <laughs> mushroom nerd, in high school, some friends of mine put wax dildos on, <laughs> on classroom doors. 
Needless to say, the teachers didn't appreciate- Hold on, first of all, how do you make a wax dildo? Where do you buy a wax dildo? What, and they, like, set it alight and stuck it to the door? And it's a pretty good prank. I- <laughs> Ah, uh, Misha Luna, I didn't see many jokes on social media. I think we're more and more afraid that people run with it and it becomes a fake news uh, and the beginning of yet another conspiracy theory. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Bratislabat, I saw a joke from Lego making a presentation of a minion set really tall, two meters fifty tall and with more than a thousand bricks. That's hilarious because minions, as in the Dis- not Disney, DreamWorks, what studio makes Minions. I feel like it's DreamWorks. Anyway, that's a good prank. I love it. Love it. Right, Pokraj, my mother plays the best pranks. Once, she looked sad as I was dropped off home, and then she convinced me we were going to meet my stepmom. I called out, stepmother, and my mum burst out laughing. <laughs> what? Something out of Hansel and Gretel. Oh, what a fucked up story that is. It's in one of my daughter's night books. I'd never read Hansel and Gretel before. I'd, I'd heard of the story. I'd heard of the title, but I didn't know what it involved. Of just like the dad and the stepmom, and the stepmom's a proper bitch, being like, hey, we ain't got enough food in here. You gotta tell your kids to fuck off out the house. And the dad accepts! How has the dad accepted that? And then he takes his kids out to the, to the, to the forest to leave them there to die. And luckily, Little old Hansel uh, had his little stones or whatever it was. That, uh, was it breadcrumbs or was it stones? It was stones back to, so he could find his way back. And then the stepmother was like, nah, not having that. We don't have any food. Take your kids and tell them to die. And uh, he decided to get some breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs got eaten and then he ended up in a witch's. It's a fucking crazy story about a bitch of a stepmother and a, a dad who accepts to put his children out in the forest to die. All right, all right, mate. How is this a bedtime story for children? Ah, oh. Charlie Sandman, we stacked all the rows of desks vertically on top of each other at school. That is a great idea. Ah, oh, that's so funny. Um, uh, uh, Doris McDonald said one year, uh, Disneyland Paris was going to start charging two pounds, two euros to go to the toilets in the park. People went nuts. That's a pretty good prank because it is totally believable that they would try and rinse us. So I imagine people went absolutely mental on social media. It's like Ryanair when they decided they were maybe going to charge people one euro to go to the toilet on the plane. And I think they did. They don't anymore though, do they? I, don't, I haven't taken Ryanair in such a long time. I fly private. No, I've taken EasyJet. Uh, uh, Ryanair. I mean, you just get a headache from the, all the colours in the plane. Uh, okay, Alex Wokey. Hello, mate. Uh, theory suggests that the tradition began as a simple joke since fish were abundant in France, in French rivers. During early spring, people would playfully, uh, uh, they would offer fake fish as gifts. Ah, okay, over time, this evolved into attaching paper fish. Okay, that's kind of getting in there. I love it. Um, Anne Austin, the best April Fools are slightly believable, so it takes you a moment to get it, okay? Like the Disneyland Paris. Most famous one in the UK was one done by Panorama, a TV, uh, in, um, TV show in the UK which is all about um, exposing stuff like uh, Envoyé Spécial in France. 1957, where they pretended spaghetti was grown on trees. <laughs> oh, I would love to see the archival footage of that, because I imagine Watching that in 2024, you'd be like, uh, no, they're not. Uh, just like bunny rabbits uh, that lay eggs. Uh, 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 uh. I saw on the Twitter account of the Eiffel Tower that they turned the third floor as an apartment. Well, there is an apartment in the third floor of the Eiffel Tower. It's Gustave Eiffel's uh, old apartment. He used to sleep, I think, in the Eiffel Tower as they were designing it. I don't know. I can't remember. But there is an apartment. I mean, it's it's like a room the size of this, basically, where they've got uh, like a you know the uh, original furniture from the time. I don't know if it's original furniture. I know nothing, uh, but they've made it look like it used to look uh, at the top. So that's not unbelievable, um, which is a good one. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Ta -ta -ta. What else have we got? What else have we got? Uh, <laughs> Ollie P. I worked with a short-ish guy. Um, is that the new 
way that you say a small person. <laughs> Shortish. Throughout the day, I would lower his chair by a few centimetres. Not enough to notice, but by the end of the day, he was sat uncomfortably low at his desk. Oh, that's pretty good. That, that take, that's like, uh, it takes investment as well, that one. It takes you for the whole day just to be like, oh, just going for a little bit. Whoop. Oh, and then he doesn't realise anything. And little, two hours later, boop. You just need to keep an eye on him just to make sure he's going down a little bit and just put it down. And then at some point, you're typing like a mentalist. Oh, now my back hurts. Oh, oh look. This one's good. This one is good. I told my father that I crashed the car. Maher Ahamane. I can't imagine his reaction to that. Ah, oh, you know what? There's a great, one of my favourite ever videos you need to type in. Um, Irish uh, driving test prank. And it's a, it's a, a, a guy who's just passed a, his driving test. The video starts it's like, just after passing my driving test, but I'm gonna let on to the old fella that I failed. He's gonna go fucking berserk. And he does. He goes in the car and t tells his dad that he's failed his test. And it's just, it's, it's pure Irish. It's pure Irish gold where the guy <laughs> is just like, the fucking three point turn there. The fucking hill start. How'd you fuck that up? And, he, and the dad is like, what kind of a cunt was he anyway? Talking about the, uh, the instructor. And he's like, oh, it was a woman. And he goes, a fucking woman. Why didn't you sweeten her up, lad? It's, so, it's, it's prime Irish video. It's amazing. Um, check it out. Uh, I would show it, but I would, I'm going to get demonetized. And uh, my video is going to get... I, I, the video that I made last time, we were watching something on my Instagram live and there was a song in the background and it, I, it now uh, it can't be watched in Russia because Universal Music has banned my video in Russia. I mean, I don't know if I've got many Russian fans, but there you go. So I'm just like, I'm not playing any copyrighted stuff on the lives ever again. Maybe for the Patreon only lives afterwards because it doesn't matter if they get, you know, demonetized because they're not monetized anyway. Patreon, you say? What's Patreon? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, you can go and support me on patreon.com slash Paul Taylor. I do an extra hour uh, of this every week that I'm doing it for real. Uh, and also you get a, a early uh, announcement, early access to certain tickets to my shows. You get backstage. Uh, sometimes we meet uh, backstage at my shows, uh, depending on which ones they are. Uh, what else do you get? You just get a bunch of, uh, like, there's probably about 50 hours of exclusive videos that no one else sees on Patreon. Um, uh, so there you go. Anyway. Uh, 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 Lex Zemet. I gave my mum... As a child, hot cola instead of a coffee. Oh, mate. Oh, that's a good one. So you boiled, you heated up Coca-Cola and you gave that to her as coffee. That's a good... Oh, we missed a trick today. We should have done some stuff. I should have done, I should have got Louise in on the prank with my wife. And then we should have also pranked Louise somehow. Ah, oh, some of these are great. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Hansel and Gretel was so dark. So dreadful. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> um, Raquel says, I'm mixing up two different stories. Am I? Well, in the book that Louise has got, it's one story. The Hansel and Gretel witch things, whatever. Anyway, uh... Mm, what else? What other pranks have you got? Ah, oh, come on, come on, come on. Well, I was doing well in a kids club quiz. Anne Austin was in a kids club quiz. Good work. Once, and I almost won, but the final question was to complete the name Hansel and dot dot dot, and I couldn't because my parents agreed with you that it was mental and it had blocked the story, and, and you never heard about it. It's crazy. Um, Ah, oh, where is Charlie? Uh, when I was in high school, some of the final year students put a fish in the school's air conditioning system. Oh my God, that is horrific. I know that people have done that in people's cars. Like you put a fish in, like in the radiator or the air intake of the car. Oh God, I mean, that is, that is hardcore. That is horrific. Um, 
Sabs. No, I didn't play a prank on my wife or daughter. I, uh, we were hungover. Completely forgot. Um, Jeremy. Oh, you, you know what? You know what did happen, though? Uh, we, they found Kate. The last episode of this live. I should have done this at the very top of the episode, shouldn't I? Uh, that we talked about Kate Middleton. Like, what the, the conspiracy theories. The internet was going crazy about Kate. Uh, and it turned out it was serious. It turned out she has cancer. And for some reason, they didn't let us know before... They, it, they let it go on for such a long time. So people were like, oh, is William beating her? Is she disappeared? Is she alive? Is she dead? What's going What is she out in public? What? It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, she's alive. She seems to be doing well. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, obviously everyone hopes that she gets better. But that's the update on Kate Middleton uh, that I got insulted on last week. Uh, obviously, my episode went out and then... We talked about it live Monday two weeks ago, and I think it was on the Tuesday or the Wednesday that the news came out, and she did the video, uh, and then obviously everyone was like, oh, how can you laugh at such... I was laughing not at her. I was laughing at the conspiracy theories that people were going crazy about. Um, anyway, thanks for, thanks for reminding me, my friend. Uh, the Parisian Metro did a very nice one some years ago, changing the station's names. Yes, they did that again this year, apparently, Irene Francfort. I was reading about this uh, before the live. Uh, that they changed the names, uh, kind of linked to the Olympics, of course. Um, what have they? What did they put? Ah, tout accepté. Right. Poisson d'Avril, RATP, temporarily have changed. Uh, so Alexandre Dumas is turned into uh, Alexandre Dumaraton, which is me. I'm Alex Dumaraton because I've got to do a marathon in six months. Victor Hugo was Victor Judo because uh, it's judo. And um, what was uh, Solferino? Uh, Solferino. Solferino. Sèvres Badminton. That's pretty funny. As, a, as opposed to Sèvres Babylon. Uh, Trocanoe instead of Trocadero. All right. All right. Uh, Cluny la Sorbonne became Cluny la Sorbox. I didn't even know Cluny la Sorbonne was a place. Nation, natation, that's pretty good. Hey, if you're ever wondering where the extra four euros uh, of metro tickets uh, that uh, we're spending over the fucking Olympic period, which you know they're not going to bring it back down, right? Eh, where's the budget going? In changing the names of the stations. What a bunch of assholes. The RATP, led by uh, Val Valerie Pécresse. Uh, Ile de France, whatever it is. Oh, what a bunch of losers. Anyway, it, I mean, it's pretty fun. To be fair, it's fun. Uh, I just wonder how much money they're spending on printing out new stickers to stick on the, uh, the stations. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Uh, what time is it? Oh, it's 37 minutes past. All right. What else is going on? Uh, hey, there we go. I'm your Russian fan. I remember Dennis, right? I tried to spell your name last time, and it's Dennis, and I've forgotten what the rest of it is. Ah, I can't remember. Hi, Dennis. Well, you can't watch my previous video because it was blocked by YouTube because I put a, a song in it, and, vi and apparently Universal or whatever, B BMG, Sony, whoever it is, have blocked that music in your country. I'm sorry. It's not my problem. Well, it is my problem. I put the music on. It's not my... Shut up. Um... <laughs> Ah, Sabs F, this is the first time I'm managing to catch the live live. Usually I always listen the day after. Thank you, Bank Holiday. Sabs, well, I'm glad you're here. And uh, what a cute photo with your little child uh, in your profile picture. Well, thanks. Thanks, uh, thanks for being here live live. I'm glad you could join. Um, Bratislava, the biggest prank I saw uh, from a TV show in Belgium where they told that the country was going to split in two, the, the, the Flemish and the, the, the French. The problem, everyone believed it and freaked out. <laughs> oh my god. Can you imagine? Oh. Uh, what else have we got? <laughs> Misha Luna. Children's tales are supposed to be cruel and scare children. Le Petit Pousset, I've never heard of it. Barbe Bleu, never heard of it. Hansel and Gretel, they're horror stories. All right, so Barbe Bleu, blue beard, and the little, I don't know what Pousset means. There's a restaurant somewhere that I've been to quite a few times called Le Petit Pousset. Oh, I think it's on the end. I think that's next to the European, L'Européen, the theatre that I've performed in multiple times. I believe the bar on the corner is called Le Petit Pousset. 
And that totally makes sense that it's a children. Nah, I make see. I'd never, I had, I had never heard of this. Um, uh, <laughs> what else? Uh, even if the cancer is public, going back to Kate, there are still conspiracies. I, I saw. I didn't even read the conspiracies, but I saw the bench that she was sitting on. There was like a circle, as if the, as if it's like a fake video as well. Listen. Whatever's happening in that royal family, since the Queen died, it's, it's been, it's been, it's, no one knows what's going on. No one is there to lead this, there is no North Star. The stuff, it's, I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. Not that I'm following it, I just hear from other people that it's outrageous. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, have you followed the feud between Natasha St. Pierre and Ines Reg? No, this is again news that 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 I don't. It's it's celebrity French news. I don't care. I don't know who Natasha St. Pierre is. I know Ines Reg. Uh, I met her multiple times doing comedy with her. She's a comedian, and apparently there's some beef between them. I don't care. They both are on Dancing with the Stars or Strictly Come Dancing, the French version. There was some racist comment or not? I don't know. I don't care. Nobody cares. Um, will you do a show in Avignon again? Well, thanks for coming to the show in Avignon when I was there in whenever it was, October, November. Uh, of course, I'll do a show again there at some point, just probably not in the next year because, um, uh, as I mentioned, I'm working on an English only show. And for now, uh, I think the calendar is pretty much uh, organized until May of next year, uh, none of it in being in France, apart from Paul Taylor and Friends, those are the only shows I'll be doing in France for the next year, maybe. There might be, but I, it, it looks like we're focusing on non-France, not non-French, not France. Um, so, uh, the UK, uh, Europe, as in like, you know, Northern European countries, Scandinavia, that kind of stuff, uh, USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, hopefully. And then we'll see, we'll see. I would obviously love to bring it to France. My worry is that the English only show is not gonna work necessarily as well in France uh, as it would outside of the country, but why not? We can try a couple and see how it goes. Um, oh, we've got another uh, uh, Russia in the house. I'm still here in Moscow, Nadia Lepetukina. Lepetukina, Lepetukina. Um, for some reason, that sounds like, do you know what I mean? That could almost be the Russian Lepetokina. It's, it, you, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Oi, can I have a, do you know? <laughs> Love it. Uh, Misha Luna, the Petit Pousse story, um, is parents abandon their seven children. They meet an ogre who mistakenly eats his seven daughters instead of the kids. <laughs> Any news about Manu Manu? Yes, I saw him. He came to the show, Paul Taylor and Friends, last week. He's doing great. Manu Manu is on his way back to Mauritius to do a show with uh, Thomas Njijola, uh, who he is doing the lights and sound for uh, on tour. And uh, he's going back to Mauritius. Hopefully this time he will have good weather because when we went in August last year, the weather was horrific. It rained the entire time. We thought we were in um, Brittany. Uh, 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 ow. Thumbelina. Oh, okay. Thumbelina is le petit pousset. Uh, okay. Thumb. Ah, le petit pousse. Thumbel Thumbelina. I, I, for some reason, I only have Thumbelina in my mum's voice. Because I, I guess she mentioned Thumbelina a couple of times. Thumbelina! What are you talking about? Fucking bastard. Uh, do I come to Lille soon? I was in Lille a couple of weeks ago. A month ago. Uh, so you just missed me. So maybe in a year? I don't know. Um... Come on, Natasha, the Canadian one who sang with Garou, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> you don't even know. What, are you giving me shit for not knowing who Natasha Love whatever is? You don't know who she is. Well, I don't know. I, 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 I don't care. Um, uh, uh, oh, have you recovered from your beach holiday? Yeah, I have. I, I'm, I'm back to being in good temperature. Uh, although it's starting to get warm again. I'm going to have to start putting some white t-shirts on soon. Um, I have recovered from the beach holiday. Uh, I'm happy to not be there anymore. <sighs> How much for a comedy show at my wedding? Three beers or more? 
You couldn't pay me any money to go and do a wedding. It would, I'm, I'm never gonna do it. I'm never gonna go to someone's wedding and try and do comedy. Unless it's a friend of mine, of course, and I have to do their best man speech, uh, which I've done once. Um, Cause only one of my mates is married. <laughs> uh, true story. Um, so no, uh, the, the, uh, I'm never, I'm never, you could never, I, I would never accept, I mean, maybe if it was a million euros, of course I would. I mean, for what to do a one hour show at a wedding and just have people stare at me going, what the hell is this? <laughs> um, right, people are saying it's terrible translation time, Chris and Kim, let's fucking do it. Terrible translations because we got 15 minutes left. Uh, we haven't done it in two weeks, so in theory, uh, we should have some terrible translations. This is the part of the podcast where you send me your uh, favourite terrible translations that you see out and about to my email, and then we go through them on the show. Terrible translations, F -A -T -W, at gmail.com, uh, and uh, you can send me those, and uh, we'll go through them. So, I know I have a couple to go through. I think the first one on the list is actually mine. Um, and then we'll, we'll see what you've got this week. We'll see how funny the translations are this week. Let's go to uh, the screen. Okay. Uh, first one is from me, from inside a toilet. I can't remember this. Because it's been that long. Oh, yeah. I was out, uh, I was out uh, somewhere uh, having a toilet where this sign, it's not a terrible translation. It just, it doesn't. I find it, it made me laugh. In English, it says, please throw only toilet paper in these toilets. A trash can is at your disposal. So what I did is I took a shit in the trash can and put the toilet paper in the bin. It, to, to me, the way this is worded is that it's like, please throw only toilet paper, nothing else. No poo, nothing, nothing, no bodily liquids. Just, you've got to throw everything in the trash can provided. Because in French, it's still, it makes sense. Merci de ne jeter que du papier toilette dans, les, dans, dans ces double WC. Dans ces water closets. Dans ces toilettes. Why didn't they just say toilette? Did they run out of ink and, and space? Were they getting charged by the letter? Dans ces WC. Uh, une poubelle est à votre disposition. It just made me laugh that you would... I mean, I guess you're not throwing poo in the toilet. You're, you're depositing it. So you can deposit things in the toilet. You just can't throw anything apart from toilet paper in there. Uh, I, just, I don't know. It made me laugh. Shut up. Um, right. Nad Lowe. Raising bilingual frogs. Oh my god, this is a long fucking email. Um, hi, uh, can I be bothered reading this? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's too long. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read it on my, I'll read it afterwards. Uh, it's too long for the, for the show. Terrible translations about French comedies. Okay. Dear Paul, most of the terrible translations are from English to mainly French. I propose the opposite. Well, let's go, Baptiste. Um, going from English, French to English, my topic will be four titles of famous French comedies translated. French title, Le Dîner de Con, uh, which is a classic French film that I have not watched, but I know it involves a Belgian situation, which is uh, Juste, son, what's his name? His name is Juste, something like that. Anyway, great film, apparently. Uh, so in, 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 in English, dîner de con would be like an idiot's dinner or something. What have they called it? The dinner game. Oh, that's boring. They didn't care. They didn't dare to use the insult. So the American title is the dinner game. Oh, I mean, losers. All right. Qu'est-ce qu'on a fait au bon Dieu? Okay. Uh, in English, I, that's another film I've never watched. Like what? I don't even know what the English trans. I don't know what bon Dieu means. What have we done to? To the God, what have we done to the, I don't know, what does it say? Serial bad weddings. What? Oh, God. Is that what the film's about? I don't even know what the film is about, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've heard about it, because they just me recently remade it, haven't they? With uh, all of these lot. Qu'est-ce qu'on a fait au bon Dieu? So why is it called Qu'est-ce qu'on a fait au bon Dieu in French? Like, what have we done? Because uh, I guess when you get married, you get married a uh, God, a uh, good Lord. M Misha Luna says, okay, uh, what have we done to the good Lord? Okay. W yeah, I mean, serial bad weddings is a horrific translation. I mean, why? I mean, it's awful. It's awful. Uh, I mean, it's just boring, more than anything. Right, next one. La tour, ma, 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 pa, la tour Montparnasse Infernale. Okay, so what I do know is that La Tour Infernale is the French translation of Die Hard. 
which again, it's the infernal tower. It kind I mean, it, it's, it's a very descriptive <laughs> way of saying die hard that happens in a tower. So I imagine this is a, a, a comedy, uh, kind of like um, Storm Troop, uh, st uh, st uh, st Storm Balls, what's that Star Wars parody called? Oh, I can't remember what it was called. Anyway, the Montparnasse Tower is not so famous as the Eiffel Tower. So for the English title, they reminded, they remind it's a spoof of Die Hard. Don't die too hard. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. Because what they've done there is not only have they translated, they've adapted it into English because the film is die hard in English. So don't die too hard. That works. I'm actually happy with that, Baptiste, as a, as a, as a translator uh, interpreting uh, linguistics degree. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy with it. La Tour Montparnasse Infernal. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, la tour, uh, uh, Spaceballs, thank you very much. That was the one I was looking for. Um, that's good, we'll do that. I'm, I'm happy with that. And finally, the most popular French comedy, La Grande Vadrouille. I would argue that is not the most popular French comedy. I would argue the pop most popular French comedy is Les Ch'tis, or something like that. Is that what it's called, Les Ch'tis? When Danny Boone uh, is, a, is a postman in the south and he gets up north, something like that. Bienvenue chez Les Ch'tis, that's it. Anyway, le, La Grande Vadrouille, I don't even know what that is in French. For the English title, I found something completely different. Don't look now, we're being shot at. <laughs> oh, what? La Grande Vadrouille, how would you translate Vadrouille into French? Um, La Grande Vadrouille is number one, according to Linda Wonder Woman. Ah, ah. Um, But as Pokhraj uh, puts it, it's very verbose. Yeah, don't look now, we're being shot at. Again, it's very... <laughs> it's very descriptive and very exactly... Do you know, do you know what I mean? Um, all right, that's pretty good. Thanks to those uh, Bratislavat, uh, Batista. Although I, I think one of them is a decent translation. I would have... I couldn't come up with a better one. Anyway, right, Tara Piggott. Hello, Tara. Auchan Biscuits. Hi, Paul. Here's an awful one from the Biscuit Island, Auchan. I think I'll pass. Nuts and crack. <laughs> oh, would you like to buy some nuts and crack? I mean, it sounds amazing. Nuts and crack. I, we, didn't we talk about this on the previous one? I feel like we talked about this last week or the week before. Nuts and crack. Because crack is the noise that it makes when you crunch it. Nuts and crunch. Crunchy nuts. There we go. La, 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 la. la Grande Vadrouille should be the great escape. Oh, it could be, yeah. But I mean, that's already a film with uh, Steve McQueen in it. Um, nuts and crack. Ah, oh, nuts and crack. I mean, they've gone with, I don't even know what their marketing ploy is there because it's English, nuts, and then crack is, what language is crack in? Because that's not even how you spell crack. I mean, that's how, I mean, that's might be how you spell it in Polish. No, because it would be K-R-A-K. They, they just gave up on that last one. They were just like, fuck it, we're finished. <laughs> Nuts and crack sounds like the bad translation of the nutcracker. <laughs> oh, it totally does. Nuts and crack gets you high. All right, that's a good one from Auchan as well. All right, here's another one from me. Rum brother. Oh yeah. So uh, my little brother came to Paris last week uh, with his girlfriend and uh, we went out to a place called Le Comptoir Général in Paris, which is a cool kind of weird sort of cocktail bar in a pirate ship decor situation. They do a bunch of rums. Um, and uh, first of all, picture of my little brother, still looking fucking gorgeous. Uh, and then, what was I taking a picture of? I think it was arranged rums. <laughs> Arranged rums, rum arrangé. Uh, arranged rum doesn't exist. You can't say arranged rum in English. It's like an arranged marriage, you know. The rum, the, <laughs> the rum has been forced to mix and to get married with another flavour and put it in a fucking bottle. That's what an arranged rum is. 
I don't even know what we call it in English. What do we call a rum that has been arrangé? A mixed rum? Is that what we call it? I don't know enough about rum in English. It's not called spi spiked rum, spiced rum, spiked rum, spiced rum, uh, spiced rum, I guess would be the best thing. Is this the footballer brother? Yes, Pokraj, it is the footballer brother. There is only one brother and he is the football one. There he is with his, st I mean, look at him, look at the fashion. I mean, he's, he's got the same colour jacket as your, uh, your profile picture, Pokraj. Uh, so what does arranged rum mean then? It means rum arrangé, it's, it's arrangé with an other, with something else. So, uh, the, the arranged rum, which often you get in the Antilles, right? Uh, is, so vanilla, vanilla and hazelnut, infused, infused rum. That's the one I was looking for, infused. Because it doesn't, it's not spicy, right? Vanilla and hazelnut isn't spiced. But it's an infused rum where they take those flavours. Vanilla, hazelnut, mango, passion, raspberry, pineapple, victory, and caramel. Jesus, that sounds delicious. Pineapple victory. What does pineapple victory taste like? Oh! Um, in fact, I only found out when I went to Hawaii that pineapples grew from the ground. I thought pineapples were in trees, like coconuts. That's how much of an idiot I was. Uh, but then when you go to Hawaii, you can visit one of the pineapple farms. Is that what they're called? Plantations? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, the pineapples grow out of the ground like a potato. <laughs> anyway, uh, so they arrange the rums, arranged marriage between rum and those, those um, ingredients. There you go. Uh, vanilla is a spice, isn't it? Is vanilla a spice? Is it? It's not very spicy. But mango's not a spice, is it? Passion, it's not a spice. Do you know what I mean? Um, pineapple victory. It's when you do a good show in Hawaii. Yeah! <laughs> and spaghetti grows on trees, didn't you know? Ah, <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah, so um, arrange rum. Uh, not what we say. Uh, the rest of it was fine. What else? What else do we have uh, today? We have, uh, it's, it's, uh, oh, Nad Lowe. Okay, she's back. Uh, I need to remember to read that email because it's a long email and I feel like uh, I didn't give it just. How do I unread a mail on Google? Oh, I don't care. Piss off. Uh, oh God, I don't know how to use Google. Google, leave me alone. She's back, right? Not a terrible translation, but how stuck up is that? Lol. Right, here we go. Welcome to our GP surgery. We kindly request our dear patients to pay their medical fees right before leaving the surgery, okay? In order to guarantee an optimal internal organization, we also beg our patients, in case of imponderable hindrance, to cancel their appointments 24 hours in advance. What? Is this in England? <laughs> because GP is very English, right? In order to guarantee an optimal internal organization, this sounds French though. This sounds like it's probably a mid saint traitant in the south of France where there's a bunch of English expats. Um, we also beg our patients. No. Yeah, it would be. Because beg, to beg somebody is prier à nos patients. Like, to prier, it's definitely French. It might be Spanish. Um, in case of imponderable hindrance. I've never, I mean, a hindrance is, a, is an English word. I'm sure imponderable is an English word. But, I mean, no one uses it except for the Queen. Uh, imponderable hindrance to cancel their appointments 24 hours in advance. <laughs> and Austin says, what a load of shit. I agree. Um, in order to guarantee optimal, yeah, this is definitely French. Even, we kindly request our dear patients. This is definitely French. Uh, a, a translation. Uh, nos chers patients is a French way. It's a nice way of saying our pa You wouldn't say our dear patients. <laughs> Uh, 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 imponderable. Doesn't that mean that you can't lay an egg? Imponderable. It's a hindrance that, may, that me, means you can't lay an egg. Because you, in French, pondre un oeuf, if we're going back to the Easter chat, imponderable. You would probably say, uh, I mean, how would you, okay, if I'm going to actually be useful on this podcast, and I, in order to guarantee an optimal internal organization, I mean, technically it's right, but it's just to, in order to, it, <laughs> In order to help us better organise the surgery, uh, we also beg our patients, please, uh, if, for, if for some unforeseen circumstance you are unable to attend your appointment, please cancel within 24 hours. There you go. It doesn't need to be that posh. 
Um, turn, turn, turn. Oh, unforeseen circumstances. There we go. I didn't even read your comments before that bit. We're on the same wavelength. That's why we're here every Monday. Right. Machine, machin. What a great name. Hi, Paul and team. Here's a dubious... T it's just Paul. No team is reading this. It's just me. Uh, here's a dubious translation. I believe... I'm not 100% if it's really bad, but I find it awkward at my best. My fellow French people can decide. It's the section direction on the packaging of a skincare product made in the UK. Is how to order actually okay to say? I thought it would be apply. Yeah. Maybe a pun I didn't get. L'ordre d'application is weird and we'd probably say conseil d'utilisation or mode d'emploi. Thanks for the podcast. Looking forward to seeing your show hopefully in April. Oh, Elsa, come and see Elsa. Oh, let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. I'm going to get cancelled and demonetized for singing fucking a Disney song. Um, okay, let's have a look. Ask Inky. Demandez à Inky. What? How to order? This is not... This can't be made in the UK. No. How to order. L'ordre d'application. L'ordre d'application. Let me see what it says in Spanish. Uh, where's Spanish? Orden de aplicación. No. Como aplicar. Like how to... How to... What did you suggest? How to... Apply. Yeah. Application. That's what it should just say. Application. Step one. Clean. Step two. Hydrate. Step three, treat. What do you mean treat? Wait, is there more to this? No, it's opened. Uh, salicic and acid cleanse. Yeah, I mean, what was, what was your second point? Is how to order actually okay to say? No, it's not okay to say. How to order is like you would be on a website and um, you're trying to uh, buy some merchandise that I've got uh, and it might be complicated. You can't just order it online. You, It's like, here's how to order. Step one, uh, go uh, find the item on your list. Step two, enter your credit card details. Step three, uh, confirm the card details. That is how to order from a website. You can't, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Uh, apply would be the, the, the perfect, great. This is mental. Uh, and it's traité, not traitier. You guys are saying, where does it say traitier? Tray TA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is not in any language. This is probably China. They, they, this is probably, judging by the label as well, it looks like a pretty shit label. So I, I reckon they've uh, lied to you. There's no way this is made in the UK. I mean, maybe the product is made in the UK, but then it's, uh, it's some, uh, somewhere else that's stolen it and uh, decided to re... Do you know what I mean? There's no way. Maybe it's Russian because Russian is the second language there. L'ordre d'application. Is that Russian? I mean, it could be Russian. I don't know. Um, weird. Very weird. That's, an, that's a weird one. Uh, right. Maher Ahamane is back. Um, I want chicken. Hi, Paul. This one doesn't need any comments. Cheers. <laughs> oh, sale of chicken murder. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Maher, you always come up with the best ones. Uh, is this in Damascus as well? Sale of chicken murder. What does it say in Arabic? You need to, uh, Mahed, you're on, you're on the live. You need to tell me what it says in, in, in Arabic. What it actually is meant to say. Is it supposed to be like s s s sale of dead chicken? Sale of chicken murder. We take the chicken, we murder the chicken. Can you murder animals? Or is that only a human to human thing? Or is that just uh? you know, a lexical linguistic thing. Hashtag sale of chicken murder. <laughs> Red Becky, it wouldn't sell it. No, could you imagine though, maybe more people would be vegan or vegetarian uh, if we just said, oh, you can buy murdered cow here. You can buy, m I'll just have the uh, murdered cow, please. How would I like it cooked? Well, I don't know, uh, medium rare. <laughs> I'll have the murdered chicken, please. Chicken Supreme is now murdered chicken. Ah, oh. the sale of dead chicken meat. Ha ha ha. I mean, are they selling live chicken meat? What the hell? Just chicken. Chi <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Uh, you can kill animals. I'm not sure about murder though. Yeah, there's probably some sort of legal linguistic thing about murder being premeditated, isn't it? Something like that. 
Oh god, that is amazing. So if you want to buy dead chicken, uh, contact Maher Ahamani. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ah, oh, it's been fun tonight. Thanks for being here. Uh, Monday Night Live. Uh, again, come and see uh, Paul Taylor and Friends, April 28th. Uh, if you want to come and see me on stage with a bunch of English-speaking friends. Uh, if not, uh, join my mailing list on my website and I will keep you up to date with any time something's happening to avoid the algorithms of social media. I'm having fun writing these emails like I'm writing to a friend. Uh, I've sent two out so far. I think I'm going to call them telegraphs. Like, instead of a telegraph, it's a telograph. Do you know what I mean? Because like a, a mailing list just sounds ridiculous or a newsletter. Hello, welcome to my newsletter. It is a newsletter, but it's just more fun because I'm actually sitting here typing it out as if I was chatting to a friend. Uh, so sign up to that on my website and I'll let you know. You will, you will know as soon as a ticket goes on sale for a show of mine somewhere in the world. Um, apart from that, Patreon, I will see you in a couple of minutes. You absolute legends of patreon.com uh, slash Paul Taylor uh, for part two of tonight's live, uh, and everyone else, uh, you guys are, uh, are great. Thank you for being here every Monday, and uh, or watching this afterwards uh, if you can't make the Monday night, or listening to it in your favourite podcast application. Um, thanks very much, Patreon. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Everyone else, I'll see you soon. Be well, not next Monday, the Monday afterwards. I mean. Portugal next Monday. So we'll do it in two weeks again. Oh, he's slacking off. He's not doing a lot of work, is he, Taylor? Guys, <laughs> just get out of here. See you later, Paul. Bye, 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 bye